Today on a live episode of Collider Sports Time, the Patriots doing again six victory in nine. The Rams score a whopping three points. And is Anthony Davis finally going to be a Laker? We're going to talk all about all of that next with the great Emmy Award winning Susie Schuster. She's our special guest. Let's get to the wide right now. There she is. She's the host of the official Lakers podcast. Welcome to the show, Susie. Thank you so much for taking the time. That's my pleasure. I thought I was going to a drug den getting here, though. I went to an alley to find you guys. Don't give away our location. I know. What are you doing? Come on, Susie. We are hidden for a reason. Fans, you know how crazy sports fans can be. They'll start knocking on our doors. We don't want any of that to happen. So, um, Jack, talk, talk to the fans a little bit about what you've uh, what you've done. All of us are aware of what you've done, but like maybe yeah. some of the fans were new to Spent years in. and years uh, at ABC Sports doing college football for them. Sidelines. My partner was the great Mike Tirico. So yeah. I spent a lot of years with him, who I actually produced for as a kid in ESPN. He um, used to call me Carrie Bradshaw because he said I basically worked in Bristol for shoe money, which is true. Um, I covered the Lakers, Dodgers, Clippers, Angels, you name it, for Fox Sports Net. I was their right. lead reporter for three years and covered the back to back to back three peat of the Lakers, which is great, nice. as well yeah. as the uh, mm-hmm. I was the lead reporter for the Angels for the World Series for Fox Sports Net. Mm-hmm. Uh, covered them from a from a six and fourteen start to a World Series run, right so that was great. Mm-hmm. Also, got to be the only person that Barry Bonds would talk to, so which made me very valuable <laughs> yeah. that year. Barry Bonds did not uh, like a ten year old Josh McCook. I'll tell you that much. No, <laughs> well, well you, you know, and, yeah. and that's an issue. My husband Rich Eisen was actually a reporter for ESPN at the yeah. time. And they were rights holders, and he would say to me, Barry, uh, you know, he's like, Barry knows that you're my girlfriend, or at the time, was I married? I don't remember. It's been a long time. <laughs> it's been a bit. And, and, and I would get the interview, and he wouldn't. He'd be furious. and say, well, you know, sucks to be you. You're right. <laughs> yeah. uh, so I did that. I did the playoffs on TNT for years. Was that years. the rally monkey year? Was the, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Right? That was the Scott yeah, Spezio yeah. rally yeah. monkey yeah. year. Remember, he had, yeah. that, he had that crazy band. Yes. And uh, Tim yeah. Sam and Frankie Rodriguez, no one knew how old he was. Right, right. Troy right. Gloss. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was a great season yeah. for the Big Tomato. And it was just a, a great time to cover sports in Southern California. California. Mm-hmm. So yeah. when I left Fox Sports, I went on to ABC. I did playoffs for TNT and the like. And so I took a couple years off, and yeah. then the Lakers came calling and said, can you come back? And I was really thrilled to come back and start the official Lakers podcast. Yeah, you and Aaron. It's great. We had Aaron on here uh, last week. It's a really great conversation yeah. with Matt Nose and I uh, with Aaron. So it's going to be fun to talk about Lakers with you later on in the show. But first, we got to get to the Super Bowl. Yes. But let me introduce everybody else. That's Matt Nose, my co-host on the Hi, show. How do you how do, you, Matt? Hi. How is everybody? <laughs> Feels like we got to move right along. Oh, moving on to the next guy. <laughs> and the man, Josh McCuga, he is back to talk uh, to talk about all kinds of things. Fresh from Phoenix. How did Fresh it go down Phoenix. there? Phoenix psyched I bet the over yesterday. Okay. Psyched oh, I took oh, the over. Oh, I have Brent Musburger calling in at 515, who is going back to back to back. Wow. Is everyone's calling him about what happened in Vegas. Oh, right. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Bet the over, but then I took a ton of different prop bets. I hit the over on the anthem. Nice. Uh, I, hit my fir- I, I bet the Sony Michelle touchdown. I bet like a Sony Michelle touchdown, so I got that. Nice. Uh, but it didn't make up for the amount of money that was lost on the the actual bets yeah. that nothing happened. Yeah, Vegas, just, Vegas cleaned up. Yeah. Yes. And, and, you know, and some of you might ask, why isn't Jeff Snyder on the show? Well, he lost all his prop bets. Makuga won his prop bets. Yeah. I want the guy who understands <laughs> the game on the show, not just the fan. All right, let's get to it. This happened yesterday. That Super Bowl, thirteen to three. This was a lot of people thought it was a snooze fest, but it was a defensive struggle. I thought between two really strong teams, the Rams came in with that strong offense. The Patriots, you know, you got Tom Brady, you got Bill Belichick, you know, you got something to deal with. They slowly, methodically choked the life out of the Rams with a little help from Jared Goff and being a bit slow on those throws. But this was an interesting game to watch. Initially, I was excited about the defensive struggle, but then as it went along, I started to do. Feel a little bit bored and frustrated that these offenses weren't playing well. Mm -hmm. It wasn't necessarily that the defenses were playing well. It was that the offenses were overthrowing passes, missing receivers, not seeing checkdowns. It was frustrating to watch on a lot of levels. And then eventually the Patriots figured out kind of halfway through through the fourth quarter what they needed to do. Matt, you watched the Super Bowl. What did you think coming out of this? Uh, Did you think the Saints should have been here? (laughs) (laughs) Here. Here's a live grenade. Go. (laughs) Go. Um, Yeah, it it was a struggle to watch yeah. um, just because the, the Rams offense so in the regular season they averaged 33 points a game and in the playoffs it was 28 points a game and they put up three and it was all three and outs three and out mm-hmm. or may, maybe they finally get a first down doesn't matter it's going to be a punt thereafter just over and over again and just you're wondering as you watch this when is this Rams offense going to finally start moving the ball and the Patriots 
it got to the point where, you know, the Rams offense is predicated upon play action yeah. and you don't have to believe in the run. So they blitzed on 57% of Goff's uh, dropbacks. Yeah. So they're just getting constant pressure to him. And he, he looked like the moment was too big for him. It did. Uh, over and over and over again. And that's why it didn't like that meaningless drive towards the end. They're finally moving the chains. But you and they still missed the field goal. Yeah, yeah. And you have to make up for so much at this point. It, yeah. doesn't, it doesn't even matter. So as you, you see, you've covered sports for so many years. Do you, what, did you see something, Jared Goff's eyes? Did you think he not? Did he didn't have it, or did you think it was more a matter of the game plan that Belichick uh, drew up here? No, I said that coming into the game. I mean, the yep. wild card was is that he was a mere child when yeah. Tom Brady won his first right. ring, right. and you cannot under you cannot underestimate the amount of pressure a kid feels as a 22 year old when he takes center stage at the Super Bowl. Mm. He was great. He was lights out. He had he was ice cold in the championship game. Yeah. leading in, but this is a different stage. What we saw actually was. A, Belichick was able to program a defense at him that was actually put together before Sean McVay was even born. It was the Buddy <laughs> Ryan 4-6. Yeah, yep. And he basically went yeah. back and he found a defense that really threw Goff. Yeah. They were able to take away, uh, obviously they were able to stifle the run game. We still don't know what happened with Todd Gurley. We yeah. probably never will know. It'll yeah. be the, Ma- the Malcolm Butler question. I was going to say yeah. it's a Malcolm That'll Butler go thing, on yeah. forever and ever. But you cannot underestimate, and as a sideline reporter, my job is to get to know these young players. It's a huge stage. Mm. It doesn't matter how much money. He came in, he looked calm and cool before, but when you're going up against Bill Belichick, you're ready for anything. And yeah. we know that Bill Belichick called out to Matt Patricia, said to him, right. how are you guys so effective against the Rams? He called his protege. Mm-hmm. And so he he was basically covered no matter what Goff did out there, except for that one play yeah, yeah. where Brandon Cooks was all by himself in the mm-hmm. end zone. And you could see on the replay, he was mm-hmm. waving wildly. Yeah. He was yeah. so At the so yeah, 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 yeah. waving his hands. And yet another guy, another guy off the bench for New England yeah. saw that, swooped in and yeah. took care of business. So, yeah. you know, the truth of the matter is I expected uh, I, a lot of air attack. I expected what we see from the Patriots. I expected Tom Brady to mm-hmm. sit back there, cock the gun, and make it go. But the fact of the matter is we saw an incredible running game from the Patriots, and that's going to be the running game that's going to keep him upright and playing until he's 45. Right. Yeah, yeah. you right. see this. Josh McCool, you you are, as a Pittsburgh Steelers fan, you know defense, man. You watching this game. I knew defense. Yeah. <laughs> well, I know you it, currently. Uh, but like, you know, you've seen some great defenses wear that black and gold. Now you look at this uh, matchup here. Did you enjoy watching this, or were you frustrated like a majority of America or the world was watching this Super Bowl that you wanted some more offense to happen? And, and still keep the defense, just a little more offense. Listen, if there's one thing I like more than defense, it's punting. I am a huge punting <laughs> guy. You're a Hecker fan. I mean, oh God. God. if there's nothing sexier than a 45-yard <laughs> punt that barely makes it out of bounds. I mean, yeah. really, that's, that's the play. Of the I'm going to get you a T-shirt Rich has made up that says punters are people, too. Punters are people, <laughs> too. That's exactly it, right. You know, the funny part was they, they put up the, the graphic on there was eight straight punts. And yeah. you see Romo just circling them. I was like, you don't need to circle them. We get it. It's all punts. <laughs> We're watching, man. Uh, it was it was one of the most boring Super Bowls you'll ever watch, and it wasn't because. Listen, I like defense. I thought it was a defensive struggle. Mm-hmm. I also think the refs swallowed the whistle a lot. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. I don't know if they were a little scared after the whole Rams Saints thing mm-hmm. or what what the meeting between refs was like. But it all it, the entire game, I had this like very uncomfortable feeling the whole time watching yeah. that game because it just felt like both teams showed up. Mm-hmm. There wasn't there wasn't any dynamics. Nobody was playing like these amazing plays. Yeah. We had maybe four memorable plays from a Super Bowl and a Super Bowl the first time ever with one total touchdown. Yeah, it's like it's it just it was an embarrassing product that they put on the field. And you can say all you want about a defensive like this, all this kind of stuff. A lot of those defensive plays that were made mm-hmm. were interference calls. Yeah, and they and, were pretty blatant. And that's what I get. I come back to. Yes, you could say it was a great defensive struggle, but the offenses didn't look like they were being no. frustrated yeah. by this defense. It was more a matter of they were missing throws, they were uh, unsettled by certain situations, and they weren't able to adapt. Belichick was the only one who made adjustments at halftime. I thought McVay like he said afterwards, I got out coached. They could not figure this thing out to get Gurley going, CJ Anderson going, or any of the uh, Well, receivers. if I may, yeah. there were some adjustments I thought McDaniels made that were great. They put in the two running back, two tight ends, one mm-hmm. right, wide receiver, Absolutely. where they line up Julian Edelman way out. Mm-hmm. And so basically, that just created all these mis- uh, mismatches for Gronk. Yeah. And to me, as a New England Patriots fan, since since the Tony East and Steve Grogan oh, era. Whoa, whoa. Back when they wore the red. Right? Whoa, I'm just whoa, saying, whoa. back in the day. John Hannah. 
I'm from Boston. Oh, you, right you can't tell by my thick accent. Well done. <laughs> um, you, you know, I watch that. And to me, watching the game, I love any time Gronk gets the ball. Because it's like it's like a Mel Brooks movie. Like, Gronk, out of the way. <laughs> yeah. you know, me, me one end zone. And it's so great to watch him. But also, I want to just call attention to the skill of Julian Edelman. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And to, to come back from knee surgery, and I appreciate that he was popped for the PEDs, but he's been very, you know, very straight up about this. Mm -hmm. But to watch his footwork last night and to show how this guy, no matter what, becomes open and creates creates completions where there shouldn't be one. That's the one part of the offense, I think, that is being overlooked. I think you make a great point there. Absolutely, Susie. Edelman was, he was named the MVP. He had 10 catches for 141 yards. We saw that video two weeks ago in the AFC Championship game when he went up to Brady and he's like, you're too old! With that playoff beard of his, you got, he's the team, now, it's Belichick and Brady, but he's the guy who dragged that team to this championship. He found himself open all the time. He was able to make critical catches at critical times, especially on third downs throughout this playoffs. It's yeah. incredible watch we talked about it last week is the rams pass rush got to brady they they yeah. made they, oh, yeah. they disrupted aaron a lot of and things Sue were in there You're aaron right. donald the greatest player to come out of pittsburgh in the last 10 years i'll say it uh he <laughs> but we said it last week the secondary was an issue akib talib mm -hmm. looked bad against julian mm -hmm. edelman julian edelman schooled him he was smoking him. it was the, it was the julian edelman show you got to yeah. figure at some point in the, even in the second quarter that one of the rams defensive coordinators was like hey did anyone want to double julian edelman like should we yeah. put something but you're right but, the the adjustments they made for those mismatches on Gronk made it even easier for Julian Edelman and, to get there. And them. how crazy, because Akeem Tlaib should know Edelman's... <laughs> yeah. He played! Played in he, practice every day. I mean, honestly, how much did they scrimmage against each other? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you would have thought he yeah. had to know yeah. his tendencies. That was yeah. my point going into when we did our preview, was that Tlaib would know everything about right. Brady. And maybe that did come into play, because Brady did not look good until, like you said, that uh, Susie, that halfway through the fourth quarter adjustment when they went big and they figured out how to expose that Rams defense. Yeah. But neither, neither one of these quarterbacks, Still Matt, look, come out of this thing looking good. Coming into the game when you looked at the Patriots' offense, they were most effective, 10 to 19 yards. Mm -hmm. And that's where Edelman mm -hmm. is the most effective. Yep. Mm -hmm. And you just, all right, let's shut him down and force Hogan or anybody else to do anything. Let's have the husk of Gronkowski, who up until the past two games yep. just looked like he should have retired at some point during the season. Have anybody else do something. And it was just like Edelman is getting three yards of separation on every route. He manages to stop, go back to, you know, come back or do a little hitch route or something else. And he's getting the separation. Yeah. It's just like, where, why aren't you guys doubling? Him. But don't Do you hold your breath every time Gronk gets the yes. ball because he oh. always falls on oh. that same yeah. elbow oh, yeah. that he's fractured so many times. And for a huge guy, and I don't know if you saw him celebrating mm -hmm. with his brothers after the game, they're all like that. Yeah, yeah, it's incredible. The, the mother must have been on steroids every time she got apples. <laughs> But you know he's so he's he's like a, a China doll. He's this big crazy Labrador puppy that I'm yeah. always afraid he's going to get hurt because he does get hurt. Yeah. He got he got yeah. hit pretty hard in the, I think it was the second quarter and he got up kind of limping and I was like, well, there's because Chung went down in yeah. a very yeah. Gronk like yes. injury, yeah. right? With that broken, With and that how broken about, arm. And how about Goff getting injured? I mean, that one time he actually got hit worse. Yeah off the field like yeah. when you oh, went yeah. running into the team again I mean, another ref swallowing yeah. whistles Brady gets that call 100 out of 100 times oh yeah like absolutely. if he gets hit out of bounds oh you're such a Steelers fan come on <laughs> come you on Susie you know Brady gets that call I don't I don't know know what you're <laughs> he was still in bounds I agreed yeah. with you know uh, uh, Romo and the, the, the team there just like you know what he's still in bounds mm -hmm. technically you're a runner at that point and a defensive back just had to be salivating because how often do you get to tee off on a quarterback yeah. especially in the modern NFL so I think even Brady takes that shot. Let, let me throw something at you. We've mentioned Roman now a few times. That guy is incredible. I know everyone said how great he is. What an ascendancy. What a rocket ascendancy to the top of analysts I've ever seen. It's incredible how he analyzes a game, and he seems to get better game to game to game. Uh, not that he has that much to improve on. If you're a team watching Romo analyze and pick stuff, I even predicted the missed field goal, do you think to yourself you want that guy to coach your team possibly? We've seen John Gruden, the most recent example. We've seen guys step out of the booth and step onto the field. Would this be something you'd want to see? Would you believe in Tony Romo coaching a team? Maybe. Or is it better to analyze from the box than it is down on the why, field? He, why on God's earth would yeah. he want to go coach Correct. a team exactly. when he is flying around the country privately, staying mm -hmm. in four mm -hmm. seasons, he's got the Cadillac of announcer, Jim Nance, next to him. Yeah. Yeah. And by the way, for a guy who spent half of his career just being belittled and people making comments yes, about him. True. He is now the most popular broadcaster, yeah, and mm -hmm. he's ascending behind maybe Chris Collinsworth. Right. I mean, who's out right. there that's better and more fun? Because mm -hmm. what happened that we saw in the game, because Jim Nance is actually a very, very funny guy, mm -hmm. 
Everyone thinks of him and the azaleas and what have you. But he's hysterical. <laughs> but Tony Romo brought, brought humor to this broadcast last yeah. night. And well, they he, had to bring was, something. They yeah. needed something. Well, so the, let's punt, the punt it. comment alone, they oh, were, they were joking back and forth yeah. about the punt comment. It's a play of the game. Yeah. It's also yeah. nice to be popular. Yes. Let's face yeah. it. Yeah, because, you know, look, when, when he was the coach of the Cowboys, Leaving was tough with the Dak situation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When he had the, the the fumble, the missed hold, you name it, it was always on his shoulders. And he's a, he's a great guy and just a lovely person. And now he's incredibly popular. Why would he coach? Uh, yeah. yeah, I'm I'm, Crazy. Yeah. I'm with you on that one. I think with the Tony Romo. Uh, the beauty of this whole thing is one, like you said, Jim Nance has this schoolboy crush on Tony Romo. Oh, it's yeah. Incredible. oh yeah. Like, before the game, you're like, well, what do you think, Tony? Oh, yeah, yeah, I bet you do. You're great. It's amazing. Those two guys together are absolutely fantastic. And anytime Tony Romo says something, he's like, yeah, probably on this one, they're going to probably run around. And he gets it right yeah. every single time. Yeah, it's mind blowing. It, it is the most entertaining. Listen, we got Dan Fouts like every single game this year. And nothing against Fouts and that broadcasting crew, but they're not Romo and Nance. So mm. when you got the national game, you know, like when you were growing up before the NFL Sunday ticket, and I was like five and six years old, and we were in Pittsburgh, and we yeah. were in a town, you're like, oh, they don't have that announcer every time. When you get Nance and Romo on your game, it is the best week. Because you got the game. Yeah. That is you. Yeah. You want to hear what Tony Romo has to say about your team now. Yeah. And 100% right. Would I want him coaching? If I was Tony Romo, one, I wouldn't want to coach. If I was a team, I don't think I'd want Tony Romo coaching because as soon as he makes a mistake, they're going to go right back to Tony Romo, the quarterback in Dallas and not the brilliant broadcast. Yeah, that's a good yeah. point. That's a very good point. Yeah. So we'll see how that plays out. Look, where this is the lowest scoring Super Bowl ever, 13-3, Matt knows. The, mm-hmm. the, the Rams didn't have Cooper Cup. The Rams, for some reason over the last three, have lost Todd Gurley for whatever reason we can't figure out. Were th- was this the difference here? Was it had not having these two offensive weapons in a critical game against the Patriots in the Super Bowl, did this factor into the whole situation? Well, considering how net their offense looked, yeah. I, would, I would assume it was a big factor, especially the Gurley. They've had time to adjust to not having Cooper Cup. Yeah. Right. But Gurley they've had for the duration of the season. And I think the reason we're not going to find out is because they would have to release on the, the injury report whether or not he was hurt. So there's got to be some sort of penalty in the CBA or something if you don't give that information up. Uh, so now they're going to take that to the grave, or at least until the statute of limitations on that expires. Yeah, mm-hmm. like so. I, I don't know why we're suddenly sitting have to do the yeoman's work of figuring out the hell's wrong with Todd Gurley because right. that guy is a franchise cornerstone. And the problem for the Rams is they went all in on this season. Yeah, Sue is gone. They've losing like three or four other guys. Yeah. They've got one year left on Goff's rookie contract, mm-hmm. and then it bumps up to like twenty some odd mil a year for the next four years. It's like four years for sixty. And so they need next year's their last real window. And then after that, Goff and uh, Cooks and Gurley eat up so much of their cap. I don't know how they do it, restocking through the draft. And they traded away so much of their, their draft picks. They only have their first round this year. And I think they lost their second, their third, maybe even their fourth. So I don't know how they retool outside of free agency and they have 28 and change. I think mm-hmm. you underestimate Les Snead. I really do. Okay. Okay. I think that he has a plan. I think that he is prepared to bring in other cogs to replace. Mm-hmm. He's an incredible mind, and I, I wouldn't put anything past him right now. So I, and I appreciate what you're saying about mm-hmm. the money, because, of mm-hmm. course, it's important. And I think what happened with Gurley is a huge question mark that we may probably never know the answer to. Because what, what do you Bay think it is? Say, what do you think it is? Do you think it's like yeah. a weird groin injury? You, you've been, uh, yeah. you know, you've no, been down I there mean, on the field. I, I get the feeling pictures that, like is there a blackmail situation? He, he was standing on the field, helmet on, on the sidelines, go. ready to go every single play. Third quarter, he was rattling off decent runs. Yeah, he was. The he one looked fine. back, but yeah, yeah, he looked good. And to to have C.J. Anderson come in, and yeah. you know, I really, Fumbled I think we're going to yeah. find out that he and McVay something happened in the locker room at halftime. That's what I think, or, I, or before the game, mm-hmm. because McVay said all week, "I am programming him mm-hmm. twice, three times more than you've seen him in the week before." We waited for the injury to subside. Yeah. And I have a feeling it's something disciplinary. You know, disciplinary. Yeah. It feels that way. And Tracy Wolfson was saying that, too, before the game started. That she, from what I know, from what they've told me, they are game planning hard for Todd Gurley. Right. The Rams are. And they want to include it him just, in the game more and more. But it was just weird that they didn't keep pound, They just didn't keep pounding the yeah. ball in there with either one of those guys. It, yeah. just, se- it just seemed so strange. Yeah. Like, it had it, – it was an eerie feeling feeling. I don't know. Because mm-hmm. if, if it was an injury – 
you know, maybe you get that Jay Cutler moment of him on, but he's standing there just yeah. like, you know, yeah. John Fogarty put me in. With the right? helmet yeah. on. With the helmet With the on helmet is the cue. On. That's the, whole the thing. Clue. Thurman Thomas couldn't even find it's his helmet. No, no coach wants to lose the Super Bowl. Right. And Bill Belichick, as great as he is, the people will always say, why did you bench Malcolm Butler? Doesn't matter how many rings he has, mm -hmm. if he runs out of feet, what yeah. have you. <laughs> people are going to always wonder what happened with Malcolm Butler. And yeah. so this is going to be the quandary, the question that comes out of this Super Bowl is yeah. what happened to Todd Gurley. But to go back to what I was saying in the beginning, you're right. They are losing some players. And, and look, Sue is a huge hole I mean, to fill. Mm -hmm. The combine's coming up. Les yeah. has a real knack for finding talent. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't be shocked if there was something that he did in the works to bring in another big name player. Yeah, okay. yeah. Well, uh, Eric Warner commented here. You guys, uh, you know, watching on chat or uh, watching us on there, leaving comments. The Rams have a major problem because their O line is getting old. Eric Warner thinks that. Uh, I love this uh, idea. Uh, ben said, Zisby Lou says, Ben said, this is what the offensive line that held those Dallas Romo teams back. They didn't fix this till the first year that Dak took over. Mm -hmm. So these O lines, this is the most important part. You see this going forward with the Rams because play action, like you were mentioning, Matt, earlier, play action is a really essential part of how the Rams play. If they can't set up the run, yeah. how can you set up the play action? That being said, Cooks got a lot. Of, it's my surprise, people. Both teams had a 100-yard receiver on their team. Sonny yeah. Michel almost ran for 100 yards himself, 94 yards there. This is, overall, I, I think the Rams have a bright future here with McVay and with Goff, and if they can figure out what happened with Gurley, figure that out, they do have a bright future. Now you got to look at the Patriots. What are the Patriots? I mean, is this... It? Do we even count them out next Never. year? Can't. Tommy is getting old. Worst. Gronk is, yeah. is Gronk coming back? They have a, they're revitalized with Sony Michelle. What do you think happens here, Susie? I, I think Gronk maybe retires. I think he's had it with his body. Mm -hmm. I think that he sees himself as a possible Hollywood leading man, which is kind of crazy. Um, <laughs> leading man? Yeah. Maybe like straight to DVD leading uh, man. Uh, maybe I think reality show. Have reality. you seen The Rock? I'm yeah, sorry, it's true, but you know. It's true. We've seen Brian Bosworth. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that, that's, that's a closer true. Call. Hey, well, he's I mean, making a comeback, Brian. John, sure. Wrestlers have way better chance, are, are way more successful, I think. Rock, John Cena right now, mm -hmm. awesome. Gronk is such, I mean, he... I want to see like yeah like a Gronk's house maybe like a caveman yeah. throwback I don't know but the, but yeah, yeah. the most right. important thing about this team is keeping the offensive line strong because yeah. that's what's going to keep Tom Brady standing upright mm -hmm. yeah. and that's the one thing that they refuel year after year mm -hmm. they make sure that the guards are the strongest guys and mm -hmm. let's face it the, def the defensive line was incredible yeah so th they're really smart about replacing we're talking about GMs they are so strong and so smart at replacing guards. Mm -hmm. And that to me is like, that. There's as a reporter doing football, the first person you want to interview when you want to go do a team is the guard. You always find the, the, the guy who's going to protect the quarterback, and he's out always right. the smartest guy on the team. Because yeah. they all went to Harvard. <laughs> they, you know what? Yeah. They're all they are all crazy smart yeah. psychos. I yeah. mean, Ed Cunningham, uh, who does ABC, he was mm -hmm. um, I think he's still on ABC. He was a guard for the for the Seahawks mm -hmm. and the Washington mm -hmm. Huskies and what have you and the Cardinals. And he, I mean, smartest guy. I've, Ross Tucker, to. yeah. good buddy of mine, yeah. crazy person, but and he went to Princeton, insanely yeah. smart yeah. offensive guard. Yep. Yeah, yeah, true story. Yeah. I did a movie with Gronk. Uh, you know, he's kind of an actor, uh, <laughs> but he's more of a playful, fun what guy. What movie did you do with well, Gronk? It was an it's independent amazing. film I did. Me, I was in it with uh, Armand Asante and a couple other oh, and uh, a couple other actors that were in it. And he was one of these guys that has to throw me out of a bar because I was right. the villain in the movie. But him and his brother throw me out their cops. And they were, you're like you said, it's like standing next to two redwoods. It's insane. That whole family yeah. is crazy. And again, so, an independent mo you know, yeah. movie in the valley could mean a lot of things. Yeah. 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 Well, no, I'm not. Yeah. I wish I was that good looking. Has <laughs> Armand Asante's career taken a turn? Just I don't know. I wish I was that virile again. Yeah. Right, so right. anyway, but but, it, but you could that's see that. That's code. Yeah, that's code. You could see that somewhere down the road for Gronk. Maybe not lead man, but certainly part of like the Expendables or something. You could see yeah. him being a part of that. Lock Gronk yeah. and two, two smoking uh, barrels. Now, sure. What I would say is, do you guys see the videos? I'm sure all of you guys out there have yeah. seen the videos. Oh. This is my camera, so I know. Hi, yeah, yeah. oh, guys. <laughs> so... I, and the videos of Brady playing music and he's just playing yes. and then Gronk's in the oh, background like doing guys. this kind of thing. And those two have such a great relationship that if Tom Brady says to him, Gronk, I need you back, yeah. that's the only... 
That's the question mark, is if Brady will play that card, I need you, I need you, Gronk, you gotta mm -hmm. be here to... What if they said, hey, Gronk, we're, we'll pay you the same amount of money, but you can only have to play every other week, so you can like recover mm -hmm. from your injuries, take a little time, and then just be healthy for the playoffs, because we'll get there. We yeah, don't, we'll, we'll get there. the AFC East to feast yeah, on. Yeah, it's fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just save them for all the bigger matchups, and then you can sit out for these ones that eh, we're not too concerned about. Bills, it, Jets, yeah. Dolphins. Yeah, everybody well, now knows. Dolphins have the Patriots defensive coordinator. So. That, that's yeah. worked out before right. with all those Patriots uh, <laughs> coordinators. The, the, the thing for me is if you are a Jets fan and you see Joe Willie Namath, mm -hmm. the pride of Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania, walk out with that trophy and hand it to a New England Patriot, are you just dying inside? I thought and that was so weird. Oh, just Didn't you brutal. think that was so strange? Oh. Yeah. Well, Joe will do. Joe will do anything now. I see yeah. Joe in ads for like God knows crazy things. I'm life just saying, it's he's like a new Wilford Brimley. He's doing life insurance. He'll do. It's oatmeal. like San Antonio Holmes in 25 years walking and giving it oh. to a raven. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Good points. Not, good points. It's, yeah. It's. Yeah, I, if yeah. it was, yeah. a, you know, you, you might have done the Emmett handoff. I'm not sure if it would have been better <laughs> mm -hmm. out of, you know, to maybe go out of conference and have Emmett hand it to sure. him. It was a little strange. Yeah, 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 I agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. Well, look, Brady has. Uh, Brady says he's going to play till he's 45. Uh, he enters the final year of his contract next year which is 27 million dollars he's well worth it more than any other quarterback you could say <laughs> yeah. he's well worth wins. it yeah. well, i'm worried about it because his wife doesn't make any money no, no. So, <laughs> you know. by the way what a great wife she will get into it with people she will go to the game and cheer listen i love her to pieces because she will get into it with brady's right. teammates take it easy i'm yeah. just saying it's not about her being a model it's the fact that she supports her man yeah but 100%. she's really pretty to look at too yeah. I well mean, sure i'm the straightest person on the planet I'm like, oh, just yeah, it. yeah, sure. That she's whole family is gorgeous. gorgeous. So my sisters, and talk yeah, about Gronk's all. brothers. Oh wait, we're yeah, I get it. This is Brady's 237th overall victory, passing Adam Vinatieri uh, for the most wins in any player in NFL history. He has 30 playoff wins, uh, which is uh, by it's the most by a starting quarterback. The next highest is Joe Montana at 16. That's oh. how far ahead he is from everyone else who's played his position. Get in this fight again? Or? No, 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 no. Okay. I, I, we yeah. can have a quick discussion, though. I think I've come a little bit closer to I thinking don't. Brady is the best of all time. It's really tough, of course, when you factor in the rules and the stuff from different eras, but six victories out of nine is pretty incredible with the possibility that he could have won all nine. He's never been blown out of a Super Bowl, so Brady could have led him to nine. I think you have to start having the conversation for real that he is the greatest of all time at his position. But I always throw the caveat in there. The rules were different on defense than they are I, now. I think all the rest of us had that conversation. You're just catching up. Yeah. No, no, I'm just, for me. <laughs> we had a conversation yeah. two years yeah, ago. Yeah, right? yeah, this, we, yeah. This was kind of settled. He's the best it, quarterback. All right. It pangs the You're heart. also younger than me. You guys didn't see the guys I saw in their primes. It pulls at the heartstrings. It pulls in my soul and every piece of me as, as a man born and raised in a city with three rivers and not some bay up there with all you fancy schmancy people eating your clams and no french fries and your sandwich. clams super, we're super fans, yeah. super fans. <laughs> wicked fans yeah but he's the greatest uh he's proven it year in and year out he yeah. does it with everybody he i mean we forget yeah. about people like wes welker like he was really good yeah yeah and yeah. when wes welker left i thought that's Done. it yeah. yeah 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 who's gonna catch the ball like yeah. who's gonna be who's gonna be a, who's gonna be a yeah. safety valve yeah. Yeah. yeah boom and then you you forget the guys even like Danny Amendola played briefly yep. for the Danny Patriots. friggin' Amendola. Yeah, Danny friggin' Amendola. <laughs> now you've got Julian Edelman, who sounds more like an insurance salesman than he does a, a, an NFL wide receiver who has the second most receptions in NFL playoff yeah. history. I mean, it first, just first Jewish MVP of a Super Bowl. By get out of here! Oh, really? really? No, well, well done, Edelman. Hell of a guy. You're welcome. Mazel, mazel, Well, listen, I the thing that I come back to, and I know I I get shit for this, but. The idea that can you he, say that? On yeah, this? I can. We yeah. can on this show. Yeah, sweet. You can't. You can't. Uh, we don't want to say the F word, but the other one we can't. Um, right. To me, until he does it without Belichick, I they're, they're intertwined. Montana did it without Walsh going to Kansas City, led him to an AFC Championship. He didn't win a he Super Bowl. He didn't win a Super Bowl, but he, he got win. to the AFC Championship. If, Bel if he could do it without Belichick, that's for me the last piece of the puzzle. I want to see Belichick also go someplace else. And I, I'm of the belief yeah, that eventually you're never going to You're never, never going to see these two playing yeah. without the without other. This is a done deal. Oh. Bill will go off to his house in Nantucket. You'll never okay. live with his blonde girlfriend. You'll never see him again except for like at the ferry. And, and Tom Just will retire. Staring to angrily at the wind. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you blow to your mind? He'll be the old yeah. man in the sea. Just and then it. Tom will go to his myriad homes around the planet. Sure, like sure. Giselle. And yeah. it'll, it'll all be great. 
they're, they're not going to play without each other. Are you kidding? This is mm-hmm. this is this is the Batman and Robin. Although I don't know who's who, and so you're never going to see. I the think two we them. know who's who in that. Do you? <laughs> yeah. Bill's Batman. Bill's right? Batman. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Bill's Batman. If, you know, trust me, he might kill his parents for motivation. To <laughs> That's how much I believe you, Bill. That's how much I believe. <laughs> he rips their own pearls. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I don't know how much more we can talk about Super Bowl, but I do want to uh, wrap the conversation up with one last question: Is that is what was your favorite Super Bowl commercial? You know, people watch Super Bowl sometimes Easy. for the commercial, for the ads. I don't want to put in the uh, the trailers. Some of those trailers are really great. But what was your favorite Super Bowl commercial? Let's go to McCook, who loves humor. McCook, you're a funny guy. You just did a stand-up <laughs> big, show. Big the only humor. one. Big humor guy. Uh, that NFL 100 commercial was absolutely mm. fantastic. I was with a bunch of Lions fans last night, a bunch of Detroit guys. And when Barry Sanders oh. touched that football, everybody was just like, ah! <laughs> and then, I mean, Terry Bradshaw, even Bradshaw. back there. The, 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 I kept, just kept thinking, I mean, you know, when you've worked in TV and forever, how many takes it took, how many cakes, not even, just yeah. takes, cakes, things to make that commercial happen. So many moving parts. It was like a bird man, mm-hmm. right? The, the, all the cameras and going around that room. Incredible. Just yeah. that, that commercial was the best thing the NFL has done since letting, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, that's, that's the best thing the NFL has done off the field in, as long as I can remember. I, I would love to know if they were all on set at the same time. I probably weren't, but I would love it if they were. Just those guys getting together, shooting the mm-hmm. shit. You see the my, the old Miami guys, you see yeah. me and Joe Green, you see all those guys in there yeah. playing. It is a lot of. Uh, what did you think when you saw and, that? And Pete Berg, we know, is the one who directed it. Who directed uh, Friday oh, Peter Berg, right? Of course. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. So, um, the, of course, I thought the funniest part was Brady taking off his rings before he did Oh, it. God. You know, we love that the That's NFL cool. worked in the girl, the little girl at the end because yeah. they're very into their She Got Game uh, mm. campaign that's going on right now. Yeah. I loved my. You know, when you saw, like, wasn't it Singletary? It was like, fumble. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, I just thought that they used. It, it was. For someone who has a special feeling for the for the National Football League, obviously because of my husband uh, being involved with it for so long, mm-hmm. and, and I really loved seeing football having fun. Yes, yeah. that's, that's yeah. what I was yeah. like. Yeah, and I will yeah. I will say this uh, on the record: Roger Goodell has an incredible personality. He's got an incredible sense of humor. I love the fact that he injected himself into it. Mm-hmm. I don't think he gets a chance to really be out there very much. People love to vilify him. He's in a tough position work wise, yeah. but I loved seeing him have fun out there, and I. I the funniest thing is, you almost got the sense that these guys wanted to be in the room oh, together. Oh, yes. yeah. So we yeah. talk about how hard it is, and you green screen and shoot mm-hmm. different things, and I get it. And Pete is so talented. That commercial made me feel like they wanted to yep. be there. Like Peyton Manning yeah. wanting to be in the room with a bunch of guys. Yeah, that's Can why you, I have the fantasy that they were all there at the same time mm-hmm. because yeah. they wanted to be there around each Imagine other. Imagine being like a yeah. PA on like, this is oh. one of your first gigs. Like, hey, we're doing this NFL commercial. Yeah, cool, Super Bowl commercial. You walk in, yeah. and it's like Barry Sanders, like, hey, do you know this? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. How about his spin move? I know. That was great. Still, still got it. Yeah, yeah, still yeah, yeah. Still got it. I thought the commercial that Jason Bateman did was very funny. That, the Hyundai one. The, yeah, yeah. That, that was good. That thing, was very funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was good. What about you, Matt? Uh, As a stand-up and also a fan of comedy. <laughs> I, I walked out of the room every time commercials were on to go get some food, to go do other things, because just locked into the game. So I only saw I saw the, the Avengers trailer. That was good. I saw a couple other things, but I missed the NFL 100 oh, commercial. Man. Oh, fine. It's two minutes. It's great. I yeah. finally saw the Stella Trois. Oh, yeah. Oh, so disappointing. That was so terrible. Why was Jeff in so that? Terrible. God bless it. Yeah, yeah and the, so their worlds are combined? The dude does not abide, son. No, Sex and Lebowski? Like, what is yeah, yeah, I don't Lebowski know. in the city? I'm not confused. On behalf of women everywhere. To bring Carrie Bradshaw back for that? Yeah. yeah. Like, really? Yeah. That's such a waste. And such a terrible dress, too. Like I don't know much divorce. about fashion. Why bring her back for that one? I, I mean, yeah. what a It was bummer. weird. Yeah. Um, I liked the the, the uh, Jason Bateman one as well. That was one of my favorite ones, just because like you think of all the difficult things you got to go through, yeah. and I love the end in there. Not not just yet, colon boy. Did not you, just yet. Did also, you, his hair looked ridiculous. Now, yeah. I mean, Jason Bateman? So did his yeah. plastic surgery. He yeah. looks good no, for no, 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 no. Oh, don't start those rumors. Don't start those rumors. Did you guys like the one? I know it was kind of a throwaway one. It was for Taco Bell and like T-Mobile, which makes me kind of want to get T-Mobile now. Oh, but it was, yeah. what do you want for dinner? And the, and the guy texting back like, you're going to want sushi, deletes it. You're, <laughs> I want tacos. Mm, it feels like it. And he kept deleting it and we wa- we're watching it and my wife turns to me and goes, that's us. Like, yeah. It is. <laughs> that is us. Yeah. I like the Bud Light Game of Thrones one. I know it's kind of a cheat, but I you think that, did? oh, I loved it. Two pieces. I didn't expect it. I didn't expect it. And the fact that they actually mir- uh, you know, mixed those two together, I was shocked by that. Okay. And to put that on, on, their, on the Super Bowl. I'm going to go like, Game of Thrones nerd on you for that one. Okay. They combined season one and a scene from season five right. into yep. one thing. Right. Uh, seems a little... Oh, I like it. Look at it. <laughs> also, been watching now. I want every bit of Game of Thrones as I can get. Yes. 
get the king out of there. Yeah. I don't want any humor and mirth. Oh, I want someone to either die, mm-hmm. get, well, uh, get uh, uh, incinerated dilly. perhaps, yeah. but uh, I don't want a dilly dilly with my dragon dragon. How about the corn syrup? Did you like the corn syrup one? I missed that one. Oh, okay. Where they're dragging the corn syrup from one uh, beer kingdom to the next, yeah. yes. claiming that they don't use corn syrup. How about corn syrup uh, is like the villain of the super? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Bill Belichick afterwards like, I was sponsored by corn syrup. <laughs> yeah. For me, it was that robot child. That was the creepiest one of them all. Oh, that was awful. I, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> my, kids, my kids were like, Mom, I don't know what that is. I'm with Makuga. Robots, Susie, no. Is it something you should know? Don't ever trust robots. Okay? <laughs> don't trust them. Don't trust them at all. Yeah. Don't trust AI. We shouldn't be going anywhere near that. We've learned our lesson in multiple movies. Have Do you not seen trust the, the Terminator? Robots. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. And or iRobot and or any of them. Any of them. No. Don't trust the robots. No. I don't even trust Small Wonder, that little girl from the 80s. I didn't trust her either. <laughs> That's a great pull. <laughs> <laughs> it's all in there. All right, let's move on to the NBA. That's Matt Nost's uh, stomping ground there with Dropping Dimes, the show we host. But we got to talk about some of these NBA trade rumors recently. Last week, the Porzingis trade happened. Happened, I think, the day you were doing Dropping Dimes that Thursday morning, right? An hour before. An hour before. So I didn't get a chance to talk to Matt about this. And I want to hear from everyone in the panel here. This was an interesting trade. A lot of news stories coming out of this, uh, coming from ESPN. The Knicks didn't hear all the offers. And now Porzingis tweeted out on his Instagram, stay woke. Nick fans, I didn't even know he knew that term. Uh, what do you think I, about what is that in Latvian? Do you know? Yeah, exactly. What I don't even know what it like? means in English in the yeah. context of his usage here. I read the full Instagram story and then I went online to go, Can someone please explain this to me? Because I'm reading it going, yeah. I have no, I understand what the word, you know, the phrase stay woke means. Yeah. And in this context, I'm like, I. So you're telling Nick fans to stay woke about it? Okay. Yeah, so, so, like like so what's the I difference between stay woke and stay awake? Out of curiosity. Um, one, that's next level. Well, one, you're cool, and the other one, you're old. I think right. that's how it is. I think it's okay, grammar yes. and improper and, and, and misuse of syntax yes. and grammar. Yes, agreed. Yeah. Right. Okay. We've well, been in New York too long to know how to yeah. use that. By the way. Yes. So you look at this with with this trade, Susie. You look at this trade. Do you think this was a good trade for the Knicks, for the Mavericks? Or do you think this kind of like shows you something about the Knicks as an organization, that they mess up this marriage with Porzingis under Dolan again? What does this tell you? Why would anybody coming out into free agency because the Knicks now clear up $74 million with a cap 74. space. 74. 6. 74.6. Why would any free agent, including Kevin Durant, want to go to New York and resuscitate this franchise? Yeah, we were talking about this. What a yeah. strange time where an athlete wouldn't want to go to New York City. Yeah. Think about New York City and all it offers with commercials, with lifestyle, restaurants, you name it, clubs. There's not going to be a player who wants to go there. It's going to mm-hmm. be a dangerous place. And I think we saw... This, the, we saw the story getting laid out in the Phil Jackson era there mm-hmm. in New York. When he brought in Derek Fisher to run the triangle, he found Kristaps Porzingis, and he was going to create a team in his image there. And mm-hmm. then that fell apart, and then Derek got cut loose, and this kid has been basically left on an island, the island yeah. of New York City. Yeah. And the happiest guy in the world is Luka Doncic, because he mm-hmm. is one of the arguably top three players in the NBA, and now he's got a big man to play right alongside of him. And mm-hmm. we're going to see the Mavericks start building right now. Look, they didn't shop him around. We know that the Pelicans didn't want him because it wasn't the right chemistry. And I'm sure you talked about this on your show. It wasn't the right Mm -hmm. X's and O's for that team. But the fact that they were able to get this done quickly, they clearly were concerned about what he was going to say. Yep. And this is yet again, and I say this as just a person on the street and not somebody who you know works for any team in particular, but yet again, Dolan mismanagement. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. I think that's the biggest problem why no one wants to go to New York is the, the specter of Dolan hangs over everything. Do I have to go to Dolan and the Sure Shot or whatever the hell they're called? Am I contractually obligated to go to his terrible yeah. concerts now? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, they, look, they want to free up cap room. Supposedly, the rumors around the NBA are they already have assurances that Durant is coming. And if Durant comes, then Kyrie is willing to opt out. Now they're all the hullabaloo with Kyrie of I don't owe you anything. Although, if you yeah. watch the full... I don't know if that's enough to win a championship with that, just those two. In, in the East, that gets you to the final, conference finals more than likely. Kyrie and KD, probably. I mean, think about it. Uh, the Bucks are the best con- uh, the best record in the, the overall NBA. And it's Giannis. They still have Middleton and Bledsoe. And they've got... Mm-hmm. They've got an interesting offensive system around them, which is basically just Giannis drive, pull the defense in, and we'll just surround you with shooters. Now Lopez is just draining threes left and right. So you can do that in the East, and a slight shift in power, but there's such a void. It's it's basically five to six teams in the East, and everybody else is a different version of terrible. And Anthony Davis did open up that window saying that he would consider the Bucs now. So that has to come into play. That's the news of the day. Good God. Uh, But, I mean, they'd have to give up. I mean, Middleton, Bledsoe, and potentially, like, they would have to gut that team. (sighs) to take back everything just it to get. But Giannis and AD, 
Who's stopping them? Yeah, but two. Who is stopping but we, them? But we in saw the this already with Boogie and AD. Like two ah, big this dudes. Is, this I don't is want totally two different. big dudes. It's, it's, that time has passed. Is it, Giannis isn't a big, though. And he's slowly shooting a little mm. bit better from outside. Mm-hmm. His, his three-point shot is getting yeah, yeah, yeah. incrementally That's better fair. with every passing month. And yeah, he's yeah. working on it. And if he can develop and get to, say, 33 34%, yeah, yeah, dear yeah. God. Because he already gets nine to ten baskets guaranteed within three feet every but, game. And Josh, you, you make a point. Like, is that enough? Well, they didn't get nothing out of this. Dennis Smith Jr. is going to be a great Nick if they yeah. can figure out how to use him. And I mean, I, we'll see what happens with Wesley Matthews and DeAndre Jordan is really the X factor here. What what kind of DeAndre Jordan are you going to get in New York to 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 be there at, at, at this the point? It's like DeAndre Jordan, the, the Dwight Howard of five years ago, right? Like, That's a fair just, comparison. Is he just like a Possibly. big guy that you're probably going to get? You know, ten, fourteen, a little bit of a headache and yeah. you know, some rebounds. But just like a big presence. Certainly as goofy as Dwight. Right. Yeah. Oh, you know? He's going to love being in New York. In, yeah. No New one's going to love New York's spot like like. <laughs> he, he's a character, so why not? Yeah. Yeah. He, he's not going to blend walking down the street. No, <laughs> not at all. And he'll love that. Mm-hmm. Um, I, the thing for me is the Mavericks went from a, a pretender, for the most part, to a legit contender right now. Uh, and, and Mark Cuban, is a, he's one of those owners like a Dallas mm-hmm. owner would be. That is going to take the risk on the whole situation. And now a team that, okay, they won a title a few years back. So yeah. they're not like that perennial loser that they were in 1995 NBA Jam. So they they could kind of come and maybe shock some people in the West. Mm-hmm. Listen, nobody's going to beat the, the Golden State Warriors. But at least they now have a two-headed monster as yeah. opposed to just Luka. Yeah, yeah. And, and you look at this team, it feels like the Colts, right? Right when Peyton Manning was getting a little too old, Andrew Luck slid in. Yeah. Right when Nowitzki's about to say goodbye, you have Donkic coming in. So this is this is an interesting move for them. Certainly keeps Rick Carlisle. Uh, occupied thinking about this team and putting it all together. I, I want to see how this goes forward for the Mavericks because I'm excited now and we'll see how Porzingis comes back. Don't don't forget, Yao Ming also had these knee injuries yeah. and had all this promise and it didn't quite work out. If Porzingis, who has an injury history, gets hurt again next year, what do we do? Because there's rumors that he's not going to play this year. For, yeah. And you shouldn't. Cuban's and you should already said point. that they're yeah. probably not going to play him. Yeah. But my bigger question is, so he's verbalized saying that he'll sign his basically one year restricted free agent, so that yeah. way he can test the open market. So they might lose him for mm-hmm. all of this, and they've sacrificed, uh, you know, they get, through Stepien rule, they can only every other first round draft pick, so they don't have their full complement of draft picks going mm-hmm. forward. Right. So they really need him to enjoy playing with Doncic so that they can pair the two of them together and hopefully go out, flip Harrison Barnes for something, yeah. and build around these two, uh, these two, and hopefully Porzingis comes back. But it's really a question of they need him to re-sign long-term to make, for this trade to make sense. Otherwise, they gave up on a lottery-drafted guy a year and something into his contract, and that's a hell of a gamble. Yeah. If I may, I think that you're looking at an owner who does a lot behind the scenes to mm-hmm. keep players happy. True. Yep. Of all the teams, I wouldn't put it past Mark Cuban to have some kind of package for Kristaps to be content there in Dallas for a longer amount of time. He rarely does anything without thinking about two, three, four years down the sure. road. Yeah. He's one of the more intellectual players, uh, owners yeah. out there. Yeah. I mean, Nowitzki took a lot less money. You just have sure to assume did. there's a handshake deal mm-hmm. somewhere. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think as Simmons puts he, out, like he'll pay him $50 million for his documentary. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you've ever, ever been in, in their facility, but I mean, he basically makes that facility. It's the nicest facility I'd ever seen until I went to the Lakers' new one. Mm-hmm. But he he makes these facilities basically shangri laws for yeah. players. It yeah. gives them so many. Pricks the NBA on the side. followed his suit when he bought oh, that yeah. team, and yeah. he was like, "Why are we like? Why do you have crap chairs? Why do we have this?" And just yeah. upgraded all the other facilities, and all the players started talking about it. To all the other teams, felt mm-hmm. the pressure to go. Yeah, maybe we should treat our star athletes like stars. And you're like, yeah. I can't yeah. believe this took. They might want. They might want to stick around and yeah. play well for us. Billion we'll dollar see. entities. Well, so College you, football, the same thing. I mean, they yeah. get those facilities. It's that same thing as, mm-hmm. you know, Alabama built one, Penn State built one, mm-hmm. Michigan finally built one, Ohio mm-hmm. State. They build these things. So when these recruits come in, and you can say all you want about pros, money is one thing, but those ancillary benefits mm-hmm. yeah. matter. They yeah. make a difference. Really do, especially over an really 85, do. 90 game season. Yeah. You know and I mean? Jimbo did the same thing in AM. He, yeah, he completely correct. upgraded that facility yeah. so to try to get better players into his university. All right, you speak of the Lakers, Susie. Let's talk about them. This Anthony Davis stuff is heating up more and more. I didn't think it was going to happen, Matt. We were kind of in the fence mm-hmm. thinking that might not happen, but now it sounds like they're really legitimately in conversation with the Lakers about Maybe. making this trade happen. As we go uh, to this, there was a lot of people involved in this. As you're hearing all the latest reports, what's your feeling about this now? Well, what can you say and can't you say all right. before we start? Well, I, I talked to you. Susie off camera. I mean, well, so. I was saying about the, as yep. you know, I, I'm the host of the official Lakers podcast, mm-hmm. so right. I I don't want to say anything. What I will, what I'd like to do is 
tell you the latest news from Brad Turner from the LA Times, which okay. he said, uh, update, and he's in Indianapolis with the team. Okay. The update is that Magic Johnson and Dell Dems talked twice today per a source. Lakers willing to give the Pelicans cap relief for Anthony Davis by taking Solomon Hill for Lonzo yep. Ball, Kyle Kuzma, Brandon Ingram, Rajon Rondo, Lance Stevenson, Michael Beasley, and two first round picks. Who, I mean, who's left on the team? I, I, yeah, so my thought is like, Chandler, I'm, uh, I am one for one shooting from the free throw line at Staples Center <laughs> during a game. So if I have to get ready, yeah, yeah. I'm in a steroid pack with my back right now. Yeah, y'all got to give me a couple days to get in there, there to run on sure. point. Look, I'll yeah. tell you this right Who's now. Who's going to run point? If Susie Schuster is the first uh, female NBA player, I want you back here on this show. I'm just next saying, right? about that. I mean, I'm ready. <laughs> That'd be awesome. I would cheer for but that. Who's, yeah. But so, who's going to run <laughs> and, point? And and, and I just it's just it's it's. My biggest concern is that I love Kyle Kuzma's potential. Yeah, yeah. I think he's, he's my so favorite of special. them. Oh yeah, yeah. I, th- I also work. like Brandon Ingram a lot too. Yeah. He's I, starting to play like yeah. you know the hype has been real. Yeah. You, you I, know what's funny though, when you watched two Golden State games ago, the one at Staples Center, mm-hmm. and you watched him and KD, and you watched Kevin Durant. I don't like it when I call, you know I try not to call players by their nicknames because like. It's work. They're not my buddies. Like, I'm really close to a lot of players. Yeah. But, like, I'm not going to, I don't want to KD it up. I call you know him Kev. I mean? you, you, know? Do, you, you do what you do so well. I call him Diamond Durant. My point Durant, is, you man. watch Brandon Ingram. Everyone keeps talking about yeah. him. He's the next KD. And you saw how little he looked yeah. next to KD. We forget yeah. all the years. KD took years and years to put weight on. Brandon's going to do that eventually, one would think. Yeah. But, man, you hope. saw a difference. But we yeah. also, did, D- D- D'Angelo Russell is now an all star. Yeah. Yeah, the Lakers gave up on him pretty it's quickly. Because Spencer Dinwiddie is out. That's why D'Angelo got the All Star nod. But still, he's been he had playing to sh- better. Yes. But he still, had to show up. He had to play. He's true. Pretty yeah. well. And, and You're you, giving up your future for one guy that, yes, Anthony Davis, awesome, yeah. amazing, transcendent Top five. talent. And you were asking me about what it's like in a locker room with yeah. talks of trade and what have you. And I've been through this many times. And the fact of the matter is, it makes. Guys feel insecure. I mean, yeah. it, it, it's it's a rough time. There was reports of tension coming out of the locker room the other night, and that that to me got overreported. And I talked to some of the some of the I got had some sources on that. And okay. and look, these are grown men. You're dealing with grown men. And yes, and, and to me, a team that doesn't get emotional, there's a problem. Uh, I think Luke Walton is incredibly well respected by his players. I think they see him as a potential Hall of Fame coach. Wow, um, I do. I okay. think I think he's cerebral. I think he could. I think with time, he's gonna. You're gonna look at him and you're gonna say he's one of the great basketball minds out there in the ilk of, mm-hmm. of Phil Jackson. But I think that that there, it's very difficult for especially for young players to mm-hmm. think that they could be gone. These guys are excited to be around LeBron James. They think that, that, that yeah. their future is attached to, to live them. In so Los why Angeles. wouldn't they? Yeah, right, right. Yeah, yeah everything about I just so New Orleans is going to take back two point guards and they already have somebody running their points yeah Drew and yeah they said Drew is going to be part of their plans going forward and Rondo or not Rondo but uh, Lonzo said he doesn't want any part of New Orleans so they're going to, yeah. need to flip that asset and I don't know who in the world so that means the Lakers are then going to be out on the market potentially for a point guard yeah I don't even I don't know who they go after at that point they can't afford Mike mm-hmm. Conley you can't do Kyrie yeah Kyrie because uh, of the Rose right the Rose rules can't they can't get Kyrie and AD on the same not team. on a trade that's not on a trade yeah yeah, 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 after yeah. The season they could after the season he right could cool. sign uh, and 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 yeah. with all the chatter about the the uh, apology that's yeah. the, the latest rumor mill loves to imagine but you know I don't know, Susie. I mean, I, I'm not. I'm not in your camp about Luke. I, I, I haven't seen anything yet to make me believe in this guy just yet. I know he comes from a good coaching tree. That being his dad, incredibly cerebral, great analyst for the NBA. But I haven't seen anything. Not even that Golden State run that impressed me because those were cursed players. They were already a machine. Like Switzer taking over for Jimmy Johnson. That was already set up. My concern here is you keep hearing all these rumors about Magic Johnson and Palinka having issues with him. Now this thing that the, the, the Athletic reported that there was a heated confrontation because. Walton said they're playing too selfishly. He may be intelligent, but if the players are turning on him and you say they're not, I don't. The reports are jumping up or down all over the place, so I don't know. And then, but this is the kind of drama that LeBron brings to the Lakers. You bring a guy. He's not like even this, playing right now, he, he, dude. He, his presence is so well, big; it doesn't even game. matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, do, do you? What do you think, Matt? Do you think this is all smoke and fire? Or are you with Susie on this one? Do you think Walton is fine where he's at? Uh, I, I I don't know. Like we talked about, who you replace him with. You fire him now. Great. The, the rumor is Jason Kidd. They've, that they've reached out to him. That's I would the rather rumor. have Brian Shaw. Just elevate <laughs> Brian Shaw. Have him close out the season. I'll take Ty Lue over Jason yeah, Kidd. Yeah, I don't. Jason Kidd spilling more drinks on the court. Um, <laughs> 
time out. Time out. Yeah. And I, you know, I got to tell you, I, I and I and, and I would say, you know, I know nothing. But I love Brian Shaw. I think that he doesn't get enough yeah. credit. Yeah. I think he's, he got a bad run in Denver. Yeah, he did. Um, I think he'd be, he could be a good coach. Yeah, I just don't know who you're replacing with. So why not just ride out the season with who you have, uh, and then figure it out if you're you know intent on getting rid of him or finding or testing the waters and seeing who's out there. Great, do it at the end of the season. But mm -hmm. you have enough discord on that team already. And if you got the team, man, I would do everything to keep Kuzma. I think mm -hmm. all the rest I'm fine with. I would do everything I could to keep Kuzma. May I point out that this is a team you're coaching half college athletes practically, yeah. Yeah. and and half older veterans with personalities. Mm -hmm. Javale McGee has a personality. He's having a season that no one expected from him. Yeah. Michael Beasley obviously was an enforcer in New York, and by the way, has injected a lot of energy when he's actually in the game. He had an awful time with his family and you know for the first half of the season so far, so mm -hmm. we didn't see much of him. And quite honestly, Lance Stevenson, people keep pointing the fingers at him. He has been nothing but energy. And I mm -hmm. watch him at practice. I watch him mm -hmm. work with the young players. I couldn't be more impressed with Lance Stevenson, the way he is a leader and jocular and fun and working out before practice, working out after practice. Same yeah. with JaVale. JaVale does a full workout after every game. So Again, these are grown men with personalities, but the challenge for Luke Walton is really mentally trying to get to two groups of guys mm -hmm. who are basically, you know, have decades between them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, so let's bring point. that into the equation where you sure. say, is, is Luke Walton a good coach or not? Mm -hmm. He has to play mental gymnastics every day. And, and I would say, if we could bring up his time in, in Golden State, yeah. just because you inherit players doesn't mean that they'll play for you. He has to, he's got to diagram these plays. Mm -hmm. Yes, he's got Steph Curry out there. But I have seen many times where a coach is, gets hurt. Someone comes in, a coach is suspended, what have you, and the team falls apart. Yeah. And Luke Walton is very zen. He was mm -hmm. like this when he played. He's a real Phil Jackson acolyte, like mm -hmm. I said. And his dad, I mean, my God. Yeah. He saw growing up, Kevin McHale came on the official Lakers podcast a couple months ago, and he was telling great stories about how he used to babysit the Walton kids. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a nightmare the Waltons, itself. there you go. But, 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 but under, Night, think Bob. about the mental gymnastics that he is playing every day trying to coach this team. Yeah. And also... He's had the same roster once or twice yeah. this season. Yeah. All right. I just think all the fire, all the smoke around it, it can't be good for the internal dynamics of the team, and we'll see how it all plays it's out. It's Lakers, though. Yeah. If there's ever any hint That's of what you being good, into, yeah. Did, you, don't you remember the drama of the Shaq and Kobe? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, Bill Jackson nuts. with the Confederate in the closet yeah. book. Yeah. 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 diss tracks on each other. He's <laughs> poking, yeah, he's poking Shaq, who's poking Nas Kobe. and Jay-Z. Yeah. Showtime was crazy. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, there's just, it's L.A., man. Yeah, it's a good point. <laughs> there it is. It's L.A., man. Uh, well, one person is not in L.A. and might be in L.A. later. Kyrie Irvin, he had an interview and uh, recently and just said that he doesn't know anybody S or shit. And so this now puts the ball. And we have a Boston uh, sports fan here, a Boston uh, native here ta to talk about this. This puts the rumor bill now in overdrive talking about whether Kyrie is going to come back. You know, people are like, well, he said he was going to a few months ago. A lot has changed since that time. Susie, you hear these comments from Kyrie in your heart, in your gut as a sports analyst, but also as a Boston native. Do you sense that Kyrie is going to come back or not going to come back? Is he laying the groundwork to leave? I mean, it sure seems like it, doesn't it? Yeah. I, and I think it's dangerous. He's really loved there. I think he's jumped into the community. He's been really embraced there. And I was surprised when he said that because yeah. I thought he had a great relationship with his young young coach and you know with they're building uh they're trying to build here they're in a I mean, jason tatum so incredible they're, they're mm -hmm. in a building mm -hmm. mode here i was really shocked to hear that but like you know obviously with guys like that see the nba has changed these guys air their dirty laundry yeah. every day yeah. of the week whether it's on their own personal instagram or their own channel every time Kyrie irving opens his mouth it's something yeah it's something weird like yep. it's yep. not he's the guy is just a, everywhere he goes. He's like the Paris Hilton, Nicole Richie of like 2008, right? Everywhere <laughs> they went, one? some <laughs> both together, like a version of each other, right? They're like everywhere they go, they, it's just Richie, a reality yeah. show. And every time he plays with somebody, it's like I'm better than him, right? And he and he comes out and he says it. I mean, Gordon Hayward's not even healthy yet. No, I don't think. I no. think that leg Mentally injury is not. yes. 
Kyrie Irving, everywhere he goes, he creates drama. He could have stayed with LeBron, and that thing, that LeBron, Kyrie Irving, could have gone for three or four more years. Yeah. Instead, Kyrie was like, nah, I don't need him. You do. He does. He's, Kyrie Irving is not going to win a championship by himself. Sometimes you don't know the shield you have when you step out from under it and become the alpha and all the crap that comes with it. Mm -hmm. I sense that he's cracking a little bit under this pressure and taking responsibility, or doesn't want to take responsibility for the team being in fourth or fifth place in the East when they should be in first or second nose. What do you think? Well, you can find the video of the entire response. Which yeah. I, I don't know. And that seems like it was more directed at the media of like, I'm, I'm sick of answering this question. Okay. And I know I'm only going to get this question for another three months. <laughs> right. Um, and that's what it seemed to me. I'm reading between the lines. So I don't know. But if New York does have two max slots available and it seems as though he wants nothing more than to go home and lift the Knicks to be a contender again and you know be the king of the garden it's kind of dangerous mm -hmm. but uh, I, I don't know because at the end of the season they'll have Nilakina, Knox and DSJ and some miscellaneous parts DeAndre Jordan is gone right. um, probably yeah so they'll have the two if they can get KD then I think they get Kyrie I don't know if Kyrie goes there first Maybe, mm. maybe not. And let's not forget these guys all text each other. Oh, yeah. Exactly. yeah. Oh, there's no collusion. What are you talking world. about? Well, that's, and that's why Anthony Davis or the, uh, didn't want to go to Boston because he says Kyrie's not going to be there. So he's like, I, I don't want to go there without a point guard. Doesn't make any sense. <laughs> well, he's going to come to L.A. without a point guard. So. <laughs> well, LeBron, yeah. you know, LeBron kind yeah, of Yeah, LeBron is problems. the point guard, though. He's yeah. point forward. Yeah, 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 point forward in that way. I, I wonder what's going to happen with him. I, uh, you know, running things ain't easy. Being on top, it, it ain't easy. He wanted it. You got to take, you got to deal with all that comes with it. And that's a scrutiny answering the same question over LeBron gets the same question for the last 17 years that he's been in the NBA that's the way it goes you know where are you going where are you going are you going he never he rarely cracks does he do these kind of like you know selfies that are a little strange sometimes sure but he rarely cracks and shows you the cracks Kyrie I think is still a young guy trying to figure this out young guy and, yeah but, well he is but you, you look at this though Nost you talk about him wanting, it could be like he could end up like Mar the new Marbury. It, he comes to try to do it, can't do it, oh, ends up I, in China. That, I yeah. think that might be a little drastic. Okay. Yeah. I think that's, I agree. With all, and thank you for having no, me on, I should say. And no, I, no, I Susie, guess please. I won't come back now. No, I don't no. want to. No, attack away. We're we, with yeah, you. We like, we'll we like this. <laughs> and do so, this. here's why you're wrong. He to it. Here's why you're wrong. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so Kyrie Irving is, uh, is beloved in the NBA. Mm -hmm. there, he's the kind of player that players want yeah. to be with, where Marbury was a bit of a cancer. Yeah, he was. Mm -hmm. So that's why Marbury ended out somewhere near Siberia. Mm -hmm. And, you know, everyone wants to be, and don't forget, Kyrie's also really bright. He's got ideas. Mm -hmm. He goes to New York. He's right in the middle of the New York zeitgeist. He can do whatever movie he wants. You know how much players love this guy because you saw everyone who went to go be in his movie. Yeah, Uncle Drew, mm -hmm. right. And, and you cannot discount player personalities and chemistry. Because he's a team builder. He's a leader. Where, mm -hmm. where he goes, other players will follow. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're all enamored of his skill set. Mm -hmm. They all say that guy has more moves and more tricks in his bag than anybody else. And even his own teammates at times stare at him in awe. And they're just a few years younger than him. But yeah. he is skilled to a degree that it's, it's hard to find. He may have the best handle in the NBA's history. Uh, put him up maybe against Iverson uh, or Steph Curry. But I think I take him over uh, those two. And you take him over Curry? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I, well, look, listen. because because he can manage to find ways to get to the rim, <laughs> and I think the it's yeah. the handling and whatnot <laughs> at the top of the key is one thing, which he can do. But it's also the ability to get to the rim and finish that Curry has, but not to the degree that Kyrie has. Well, and I make the comparison only because Starbury also came out from under Garnett. We didn't want to be under Garnett's shadow. Went to New York, tried to lead that team. Of course, he ended up in China. But hey, you can't discount man has two statues in his name in China. Yeah, he's beloved he's, in China. Yeah, he's beloved in China. They did a documentary. You and he's he's started. He's got that. He's got that. Yeah. At least, which he's got going for him. So, but no, I agree. Kyrie is, uh, I think, a more talented player. And you're right. Uh, people want to come play for Kyrie. NBA ring, statue in China. <laughs> two, statues, hey, look, two statues. Two statues. Sold out Broadway play yeah, in China. That he stars in exactly. about himself. Woo. It's mind Now we're talking about some Steven Seagal level <laughs> stuff. Plus, all the players want to be. It wasn't Uncle Buck. Was that the name Uncle of Drew. Uncle, Uncle Drew. Drew, Drew yeah. Which was a decent too. movie. I'd like to be Uncle Buck on the other hand. Was that Chris Farley? What was John Candy? John Candy. You should see that toast. like. 
Christmas steroids. That I don't remember. That. Yeah. Uncle Drew too. They all want to be in that. Yeah, that doesn't matter. Though. Those free throws you're going to be shooting. Thanks to the roids. Right. right? <laughs> crushing oh, those. Good to go. Bring her on. Well, we, should, we were going to make her the first uh, uh, female NBA player, but she tested positive with steroids. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah. She could have announced it before. I got popped. What else is new? Her and Edelman hanging out in the offseason. Hey, Rich, I'll see your 40 yard dash. I'm playing the NBA. That's right. Well, the other part of this alley location is we have the new Balco going. So it's all the newest designer stuff that they haven't started testing for. I know. Kim, I all. picked up a dime bag and a pack of, and a Metro <laughs> pack on the way in. You found a dime bag? <laughs> all right, before I, we I don't know what that is. Guests, <laughs> before we lose any potential sponsors. All right, well, thanks everybody for watching this episode of Collider Sports Time. we got to wrap this thing up, especially thanks to all of you who watched it live and sent in comments. I was trying to catch up and read as much as I could, but listen, we can't appreciate enough how much love you've given the show as we keep going, and definitely because it attracts guests like Susie Schuster. Thank you so much for stopping yeah. by. Well, thanks, guys. Subscribe, us. please, Thank to the official yep. Lakers podcast. Brent mm -hmm. Musburger on today. We had Kareem Abdul-Jabbar for an hour last week, nice. which was incredible. Yeah. Um, and then players on the road all the time. Aaron Larsoul, my co-host, who's amazing. Yep. He's constantly getting great information, special sauces, I like to say, so please subscribe. <laughs> That's awesome. And Aaron can shoot, too. I've seen some videos of Aaron uh, shooting the ball himself, shooting the rock himself. You cannot follow Susie on social media. She doesn't have social media. That's why it's not, not up. Allowed. So, so <laughs> listen to her on not the podcast. Allowed. Not allowed. Chill out. Not just Cougar, where can people find you, my friend? Uh, you guys could find me watching the Phoenix Open instead of most of the football. Uh, oh, wait. No, talk about that real quick. I'm sorry. Was no, it's fine. No, it's, no, no, no. The it was my mistake. Go do it, Josh. No, the waste management. Congratulations to Ricky Fowler. It was a hell of a weekend of golf. Mm -hmm. uh, he finished off in the rain, a crazy back nine. Uh, the, the PGA Tour is not utilizing their fan base enough like they use it in Phoenix. Uh, the amount of people that were in that Phoenix area this weekend, I was lucky enough to be there. It's, it's just electric. It, you, the PGA should do that in every city they go to. Uh, they have enough young talent to push that many people and that much insanity and fervor over a golf tournament is something special. And you know, we the Masters in two months. Uh, yeah. It's it's an awesome time for golf. Who impressed you coming out of that Open, other than Fowler, obviously? Um, you know, I mean, I think did you come back from a double bogey or was triple, triple bogey? Triple bogey. Sorry. Triple bogey. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, listen, this kid Brandon Grace from South Africa is playing hot right now. Uh, it, Justin Thomas might be the best player on the planet. Mm -hmm. And there is so much young American and foreign talent that there isn't. There is no need for a European tour. There is no need for just a PGA tour. There should be a world tour that travels the globe all year round, spends most of the summer in the states, and then you know you can just bounce back and forth. But these guys are all playing, and that mm -hmm. 16th hole is unlike anything in sports. And if the PGA was smart, they would try and create that in other places because. I mean, I'm the only one watching the Quail Hollow in June. Do you know what I mean? But yes, you tons are. Tons of people are watching the Phoenix Phoenix Open for that reason alone. Yeah, yeah. your love your love of golf and NHL is quite uh, knowledge. You know, everyone knows. Everybody's this. got the thing. Yeah, yeah. And it, it, it you was, pick those two. And I'll, I love it. it. Yeah, I'll take the hit on that. I was supposed to throw to Josh after the NFL, so I'll take the hit on that. Please, uh, we're gonna have more golf talk, more NHL talk as the season goes along. I promise you. Uh, as this thing now, the Super Bowl's wrapped up. That's when we're start focus on NBA, NHL, ML. LB golf, all the things that are happening out there. Trust me on that. Matt Nose, where can people find you? Uh, Dropping Dimes will be out on uh, Thursday. You can hit me up online at Matt Nost and follow me there for all the different updates and whatnot in London, February 23rd. I think there's five seats left at this point, yep. so there's, pick up those seats. Come see us live in yep. London, February 23rd. Got the passport, got the tickets, got the place I'm going to stay. We're, we're going to be there. Mm -hmm. we got, we're got we five tickets away. Go to kingsplace.co.uk to get your tickets. Come see our shenanigans there live for a couple hours in London. All right, thanks, everybody. You can follow me at The Rogue Says on Twitter and on Instagram. And please subscribe to Collider Sports on the YouTube YouTube channel see that red button down there hit subscribe or go on the collider sports podcast channel and hit subscribe there that helps keep our numbers up helps keep us bringing in guests like Susie schuster and other guests down the road it's a lot of fun thanks everybody have a great rest of your week and uh, we will talk to you next time on collider sports time